Hi everyone, welcome to Unapologetically You with myself Tulse and the beautiful Kelly and this is way where we are discussing our health and wellness. So in previous series, we've spoken to guests, we've spoken about their experiences. And in last season in particular, in season three, this is where we were really focused on health and wellness. We were talking about self-sabotage, we were talking about burnout and overwhelm and giving you tips and tools um, about your overall health and well well-being. But this new season, we are changing things up a little bit. We will be including guest speakers who can support you and your personal wellness. But we're also going to feed in those science-backed tools that can you can use for your life and hopefully instigate thought-provoking topics that you can get motivated when it comes to looking after yourself and your loved ones. And don't forget, we are available on patreon so you can support us for the price of a cup of coffee and we'd appreciate if you can share this if you enjoyed the podcast so without further ado welcome my wonderful co-host kelly beautiful tolls how are you i'm well thank you how are you yeah i'm well you look well you look like you've got a tan there i know a real tan yeah. Yes. I like the fact that when you go on holiday and there is sun, <laughs> you just get that <laughs> kissed glow, don't you? It's the glow. That's what I should have said. You do have a glow about you. It looks awesome. Oh, bless you. Well, you look amazing too. So these, are for anybody who's looking on YouTube, you can scope us what we look like. <laughs> <laughs> But um, I'm looking forward to our new season. I can't believe we're in season four. Can you believe that? Neither can I. No, actually, when I read the email coming through and it said season four, and I have we been doing this for three years? Oh, so yeah. much has happened in amongst the podcast, in our own lives, in and around everyone we record as well. So it just feels like life is flying by. This year has completely gone by. So... We are recording this in 2022, but it will launch in 2023. Can mm -hmm. you believe it? This is insane. So mm -hmm. I'm going to start off with a QA. and a So after an introduction, this is our new feature of our podcast. This is our new theme. And I'm excited because I want to <laughs> I wanna hear what <laughs> Kelly's biggest win was for this past week. I, I have taken our own advice from our own season three, or was it season two? Season three, I think. And uh, stopped using my phone at night time. I miss all of Tulsa's messages. <laughs> um, and I've really decided to start meditating consistently and properly because I have been meditating inconsistently and improperly as it turns out and the results you get when you do it um, both properly and consistently are enormous amazing I feel good I um, and there are results in many 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 different ways so that's my biggest win I'm going to say I love what about you I love that well first can I just acknowledge how amazing this is because it's it is amazing I think as coaches, I think for me in particular, especially the last few years, it's almost like do as I say, not as I do. And it's very hypocritical. And it's just like we tell them how to, we tell our athletes, we tell our clients how to eat, how, how to eat well, how to move well, how to do all of these things for their health and wellness. And we really have time or we really make time to adopt some of those habits for ourselves. And I feel like if we are setting an example, not only for ourselves, but it doesn't matter if they are, you know, our loved ones or the people around us adopt it or not, but we're seeking the benefits and people will then automatically go, there's something different about you. How do, how do I get yeah. what you've got, right? It's true. People ask. They do. Yep. And you don't need to preach. You don't need to... Um, harp on about what you're doing and what you're saying right now Cal is I remember throughout season three actually throughout the year you were saying that I need to get into meditation I need to get into meditation and I like kind of recognize some of the ways that you were flustered um not in a bad way I just think sometimes it was, it was almost like energy leakage you know how like when a runner doesn't run efficiently then you know how to fix right and I feel That's like right. for us 
it's like we can find our own energy leakages throughout the day and the fact that you've committed to meditation and i remember you texting me actually you texted me a few weeks ago and you said oh, i'm really bad at meditation or i can't do it and i'm just like no it just needs practice and then you know yeah. give yourself that time to mold into what you need because some days you might need to, um uh, transcendental uh, meditation you might need mantra meditation you might need silence you might need um yoga nidra which is complete like for sleep meditation um and i just love the fact that you've adopted that so and you feel it's like transcended into all aspects of your life most definitely most definitely. And I think on top of what you were saying, you do have to find the right teacher or the person to guide you. Now, I've moved into self-guided meditation, which is I find more powerful, but I never thought I would. I never thought I'd find that more powerful. I thought it would be more or less relaxing to be thinking as well as relaxing. But you can do it. You can do it. And um, it is more personal and it's more pivotal, pivotal to your own lifestyle so yeah I, I love it and i thank you very much for um just that little gentle push oh it was a gentle push it wasn't even a push it was just a gentle like you say i wanted that glow that you have and i feel like i'm getting it well it's funny you say that because it's almost like we bat off one another whenever you say oh I'm really getting into my meditation I'm, I'm taking care of my you know not looking at the phone before evening and mm -hmm. and it kind of reminds me then okay I yeah I need to get back into it because sometimes you fall out of routine right or like you do. when you've been away and you come back and you've got jet lag and you haven't adopted the jet lag plan not unlike you did before <laughs> <laughs> it's like jet lag affects me so badly either way east or west it doesn't matter oh yeah totally so i do that lab jet lag plan before i flew out perfect adopted to the time zone perfectly i was like oh my Ooh, god well done I wish teams would actually adopt this more rigidly but it's really difficult when you've got a family and when you've got work right that yeah. time so it's really yes. Oh, but it's it's a no-brainer if you can do a jet lag plan and you can adopt to it oh my goodness it makes your life a hell of a lot easier but then on the way back it was like literally okay well we only had really the day of travel to actually adopt the time zone and it didn't work for me so I think so my biggest win is coming getting up for this podcast and actually you know feeling a little bit more alive and getting back into this time zone I feel like that's a big win and then and it doesn't need to be a big win right so I'm going to throw no. it out to our audience tell us in the comments below what is your biggest win today and Kel I've got question number two for you okay what has made you smile recently what's the one thing that's made you smile one thing, I have several projects on the go and one of them had a big win today, uh, moved forward, and um, that looks like it's going to come to fruition, not completion, but fruition, yeah, in March 2023. So that's it, there's a timeline to it. The timeline could change, but definitely puts a big smile on my face. Oh, that's amazing. I love that. I, no, I you don't know anything about it. Sorry? But, yeah. I said, it's, you don't even know anything about it. So I, I love that you love it without knowing anything about it. Well, you're involved, so it has to be good, right? It's like your time, your no, effort. For good. Always for good. And that's the thing. For those of you watching on YouTube, you're going to see how big Kelly's smile is. So it's kind of infectious. So even if I don't know anything about this project, the fact that you beamed as soon as you talked about it, I was like, oh, that's sweet. Like, it's good. I'm happy you're happy, right? Yeah, God love you. But it's funny. Yeah, thank you. I'm going to I'm gonna say mine's not a big thing, but I don't think that's the whole point of this question, right? No, it's, not. it's what makes you feel like a win or yeah. feel like smiling. Yeah, what made you feel like I think for me in particular this week, or this only happened yesterday actually, is um, I'm down at my parents' house for a few weeks and we're here to see the rugby, which is really, really cool. I've got tickets to see yeah. international rugby. And the thing that made me smile is I was making fun of my mum. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
I was imitating her. She's not well recently and she's got this nasty cough. But I imitated her like kind of being like, um, you know how like you, you're, you're kind of like feeling sorry for yourself. But she never does this. But I just over exaggerated it. <laughs> so basically, I was just laughing at her and myself of like, and we just had a little giggle. So that made me smile and laugh this week. Um, okay, big thing. This is the biggest yeah. question I feel of the podcast. What yeah. is your intention for this week, this coming week, this new week? To take another step forward with the project. And I have another one that I've, the timeline to start is coming coming uh it, well, it's going to start <laughs> the timeline to actually start talking to people about it uh is coming because the this other one had a big step forward because i spoke to an investor and yes there's interest so uh while i was speaking about this this other one came up and they went oh let's speak more about that as well so uh yeah that's why that one might be moving forward but just that's also why it puts me on lots of separate timelines yeah i love that those but it's really exciting i love that these throw those three questions kind of aligned so it's like it's your big win it's making you smile and it's your future intention mine's going to be a bit of a intimate answer like Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> not in the way you oh because okay. because um so recently, so this year in particular, I feel like I've focused on a few projects. I've not like spread myself thinly. Most people say I spread myself too thinly, but I like having different projects on the go. I, I work well. It does. Yeah, right? We, <laughs> you we do. Make it, we make it work. But I feel like the thing for me is because I honed in some of the particular projects. So I focused on my YouTube channel, focused on podcast. I focused on a few projects that were emerging. And I didn't want to put too much on my plate. And I actually have enjoyed, you know, learning more about spirituality and growth within myself. So most recently, I've been asking my soul. I don't know if anybody believes in this, but I believe in that. And I know Kelly does too. So we, I've been asking my inner heart and soul, like, what do you want? How are you supposed to serve in this world? And that's my biggest question recently. I've been asking it all year. I've been asking it in previous years, but I feel like um, you're probably, you guys who are listening <laughs> in the early doors of this podcast, you're going to hopefully see a whole new journey emerge because I'm asking myself this deep question. And I'm just like, there is something more. And I know that I love, you know, being in the health and wellness industry. I love being a coach. I love coaching people. So I know it's in within that arena I'm just like yeah. something else. There's something else that is trying to emerge through me and I just don't know what it is. So that's why I still don't know. Say okay. that. Again. I said you still don't know. You, there's no answer, no definitive answer that you can. I don't think there is, no. And I feel like yeah. coach, we always go through our own little, I don't know how to describe it. You know how like sometimes you have contracts and then those contracts run out, you get new contracts and projects and yeah. get better, right? <laughs> you you yes lifestyle right but I feel like I'm going through these cycles and I'm like no there's there's a new thing that I'm supposed to be doing but I don't know what it is so I'm, I'm like trying stuff out you know obviously I'm sticking to my YouTube channel and and doing all of that I've changed Talk about your YouTube channel you've got 30 seconds tell us about it go <laughs> So my YouTube channel is about strength, conditioning, mobility, and mindfulness, and it's all about me. So it's now rebranded as Tulsi Coach, and I'm super mm -hmm. excited to bring a brand new video every week. And that's the one thing that excites me. I love providing um, exercises that you can do at home. You can do bodyweight exercises and mindfulness that you can attach to your daily lifestyle so that's me all right let's move on really good website and Tulsa is brilliant at producing new content oh bless you I just enjoy yeah. it I feel like I you and she enjoys it and I enjoy doing it I enjoy following along when I can do it too yeah I appreciate that yeah it's fun it's fun to do it's fun to create and luckily I've got the experience of background <laughs> that I've worked <laughs> hard to get so hot topic of the day this is our brand mm -hmm of our podcast so our hot topic of the day this is going to be well I'm gonna kind of grill Kelly 
and obviously I'm going to answer as well, to have questions <laughs> about high performers. Do high performers have a greater risk of burnout and why? Now, this hot topic is inspired by the wonderful James Hewitt. I used to work with him at Inter Performance, and now he's his own entity. He's doing his own thing and working on his own projects. So if you want to find out the article that I read, which inspired this hot topic of the day, it will be in the description box below. But the first thing he talks about is, is passion overrated? We talked about our passion projects right now, right? You made me plug my youtube channel and you're you're <laughs> on this whole new adventure for this project and investment is passion overrated and apparently george hegel the german philosopher argues that passion is vital to reaching the highest levels of achievement providing we are in control of it what do you think how what do you think is oh i agree with that there's passion and there's obsession and it's a really fine line in between but once you go over that fine line there are so many negatives to your health to the time that you uh, put into other things like relationships with family with friends with loved ones and the, look probably a lot more but they would be the two major ones that would affect you or affect me in the past when there has been an obsession but passion having a passion i think is great what do you think okay well i'm i'm gonna go a little bit of a, a flip side for this comment okay because i cannot remember where i read it but this lady said why does everybody need to find their passion like having a passion and having that as a job is so much pressure that some people just want to do a job because they're good at their job and then they have a side hustle that they just want to do because they enjoy doing that so say for example um in 2022 I picked up you know my watercolors and I started painting and just for fun and it was something that like I don't need to be an expert at and I'm very I like things being perfect and I'm trying to apply things so I can still take imperfect action so it's almost mm -hmm. like try things and if they f up then it doesn't matter right at least you've tried it and you've evolved your learning but I feel like for the watercolors in particular I was like well I, it's something that I really enjoy but then it, the part of me was like that monkey mind going oh well that's not right and that's not right and kind of thing and so it was almost like but this is like a part of my passion. That's something that I loved as a child. It doesn't need to be perfect. But that was something that I don't need to have to kind of do as a career, if that makes sense. I feel like what this girl was talking about, what this lady was talking about was everybody's got this thing of, oh, you need to find what you're passionate about. You need to find what you love in life. And then that's your life mission, right? That's your purpose. And it's like, why does everybody need yeah. to Okay. okay, so I, I probably misread when you said passion because passion to me is something that you love doing and you're excited about it and, you you know, it's not a chore to do it. So to me that's a passion. Yeah. I guess it does depend how you define passion, right? But when this uh, author lady uh, said you have to find your passion in life, I don't think you have to find it. I think you kind of just... Go, I really loved doing that mm. and I want to do it again. Yeah. And then you can label it a passion if you like or you can go, man, I love tennis. Man, I love travelling the world and watching everyone. You've definitely hit that um, fine line between passion and obsession. And I think that's what this the whole topic is about, right? It's, it's going – this is what we define as passion. It's something that we enjoy. It's something that uh, enables us to get into the flow of things. It, it like ignites that excited, joyful happiness in us, right? Yeah. Whereas yeah. an obsession can be, I don't know, say for example, some of the huge entrepreneurs and huge CEOs mm -hmm. who made a huge sensation for their business, but the health has suffered, the well-being has suffered. <laughs> They've what unhealthy obsessions at what cost the yeah. that they're pursuing their passion so I do agree with you in that sense in terms of can your passion leave you 
feeling exhausted? Can it? Yes. What is your passion? Does watercolour leave you exhausted? No. When I no. Does when you were were passionate about working out and were you passionate about working out or were you passionate about working out to reach an end point? Which really Oh that yeah, so it depends on the end point, doesn't it? I was gonna say um, that's a really good one because when I was weight training and obviously I was studying and getting into the coaching lifestyle, I still had a lot of issues about my weight, you know, insecurities mentally. Um, I was still struggling with um, good food habits, I would say. There was no, I'm not going to label it, but you can read it in my book that's coming out in 2023. <laughs> oh, finally. Awesome. But um, yeah, so basically I think for me is I was going through a lot of issues. I used strength training or weight training or exercise as an obsessive compulsive thing. And I'm thinking it's good for me because exercise is good for you, right? But they could get to a point they say. you're working out two or three times a day and it's like this is oh. not healthy. No, not mentally healthy, not physically healthy. Yeah. No. No. And even then, it's just like now I label training as different. So, like, I class yin yoga as still doing something. I class walking as doing something. So, I could be still training three times a day, but it's it's something that's healthy for your body. Or, like, you undulate your training. Like, one is high cardiovascular day, another one is high weight training day, another is low reps, heavyweight, whatever it is. Um, and I feel like it can get obsessive, but there is no restriction unless you're honest with yourself, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And you added another word in there too. So you went obsessive, compulsive. And compulsive is kind of the next bad thing along mm. <laughs> before you burn out, right? So, yeah, you've got to make sure you don't, fall over the line into the next one because it's just like dominoes toppling. You'll end up at burnout. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like the thing is if, we, if we're using that excuse of this is my passion, I'm really excited about it, and then you're not giving yourself those the time, the attention, the wellness, and, and I feel like this is probably another hot topic for another podcast, but I'm just going to sneak yeah. it in because okay. I'm – Saw, I saw a story by a CEO. She's a co-CEO with her other partner. And she had a snapshot of her diary of the day. It was chock block Kelly. It was chock block And I was like, well, where is time for food? Where is time for breathing? Where is time for exercise? All these different things. And I'm like, you've chock blocked your diary. And hands up, I I'm guilty of that. I used to do that, which means that I know better because I, I learned from what I did. But it's almost like yes. I'm passionate about my job. Like I love coaching and I love doing that. But I was on the point of burnout because I wasn't looking after myself. But then yeah. this is the other question I wanted to ask as well. Hustle culture. Is that still the norm? Is that still a thing now? Or it never was for me. I never never bought into it. I didn't like the word. I didn't like the I didn't like it. What about grind? No, I never liked that word either. Even for <laughs> um, even for writing programs for, you know, like the athletes go, oh, you know, grind or, yeah, no, no it's better. It's better okay. Word. I have another question for you. If your athletes met you with the attitude that they really wanted to hustle and they really wanted to grind, how would you approach that? I could make them hurt with a couple of kilos. So, you know, <laughs> um, yeah, they, they can get a good solid workout without it being a grind. And if it is a grind, because there's some workouts that need to be, you know, you've got to work on that, that endurance um, for, for certain sports. But, um, yeah, they get them, but then they've also got to really work hard on their recovery every time. They have to always work hard on their recovery. So I write a recovery program every day that follows the strength program 
the follows a conditioning program. So it all comes, yeah, well, hopefully it all comes together. And but I yeah. think, yeah, I, I agree with you on that because I think it comes with um, the education, the awareness. And if you can teach these young kids very early on of, yeah, they they have way more energy. They're able to recover a lot quicker, but it's just it's like giving them those little tools and habits early on just to go, well, you can utilize this, you can use it, but here's the information, right? Here's why we're doing it. And I think it, it de definitely comes back to why. Some people just aren't interested in it, that's fine. But um, I read that the hustle and the grind fetish of a particular kind of success is based on piles of cash and the belief that the only way to achieve that cash is by working long hours. It's ah, okay. the expense and sacrificing health and relationships. And I feel like when you're on the brink of burnout, when you're pursuing your passion and you're really excited about it and you're just going, oh, let me just do these hours now because I really care about my business or I really care about that and this is what I'm doing. I feel like it can then, there's a fine line between that and obsession. And when you cross that line, because sometimes you're not aware of what's happening, you're sacrificing the time with the relationships, you're sacrificing your health and wellness, you're not eating well, you're not looking after yourself, you're not exercising because you're then pursuing that passion as an obsession. Yes. That was a lot to take in. But, yes, I was trying to follow a line, visualise at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, look, as long as you take breaks, as long as you're, like you say, aware and educate yourself about recovery and what that means and the reverse, what it means if you don't do it. Because the the body keeps the score; it'll catch up with you for sure. And um, oh, I completely lost my train of thought. Then I was going to talk about um, the Harvard study of that saying: the long, longest living people, the healthiest, happiest living people, are the ones yes. who had healthy relationships. Right. So if you're, oh, pushing, yeah, yeah, right. So if you're pushing people away, well. If you can't recognize it in yourself that you're changing, the people around you will be able to give you that like kind of like nudge, as you said, early doors, right? Have give you that little bit of a push to go, look, this isn't you, this isn't like you. You're probably going off on the wrong direction. He is, you know, he is the barriers for the bowling alley. You kind of need need to rein it back. Yes. There's the parameters, stay in them. Yeah, but if yeah. you push people away, and I'm guilty of that, you know, you start to push people away and friends away, then who have you got to look after yourself, right? And and um, we are both very self-reflective in our own lives, right? Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. think when James was talking about what are you, what are your strengths? If you can hone in those passions and then not um, veer down the dark side of the hustle culture. So what are your strengths? And I did a test actually. And for those of you, like I said, the article is in the description box below, but I did the test and it says my signature strengths, which is very strange. I feel like we were talking about this for a couple of podcasts. Yes. Like, like our values, yes, we change, do. our strengths change, but there's like core values, but then there's a few others that kind of mold and adapt to when we evolve and grow, right? As we get older. Mm -hmm. So apparently, mine are honesty, humor, love of learning, definitely, gratitude, definitely, yeah. and spirituality. Yeah. yeah, I've done that test. What's it called? Oh, good question. IVF, I think. Yeah. Is, what it, is it that? I don't know. I just had a notification and it said it's a university of oh, something. B I A, <laughs> IVF. <laughs> it's an acronym um v-i-a v-i-a institute <clears throat> v-i-a institute okay i thought it was a university of something or other um oh, yes okay i have done that i cannot remember i think leadership was one of them because it shocked me and that's the only one i remember i can't remember the rest. i'll have to do it and um Okay, well, put... ignore the task. What do you think your strengths are? 
I know, right? Interesting. Okay. So um, I would not have said leadership. I would say relationship building, which is possibly leadership anyway. Relationship building, relationship building. Um, I am good at seeing um, seeing things from another person's point of view. I'm good at this is how I help my husband. <laughs> Um, when he deals with a lot of different people, a lot of people. He would have uh, scores of people that he's trying to build relationships with and it's it's hard. Not everyone gets along with everyone and so he's stuck in the middle there and he will say, this person said this, saw that, did this and um, you go, yeah, but from where they're sitting, blah, 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 and he goes, oh, you, like, you're right. And, yeah, and I appreciate that, but I really just wanted to have someone to grumble to. <laughs> I wasn't really looking for a solution. But, anyway, I am good at that because he says I am good at that. And um, I'm logical. I guess I'm logical, yeah. Yeah, that, those are good qualities. Would you agree? I definitely agree. I think there's a few more in there, but I definitely agree with what you've called out because – the thing is, if you don't recognize your own strengths, if somebody else tells you what your strengths are, there's a debate. It's from your perspective. Yes, yes, yes. And yet, when I said those three things, would you say those three things are attributes of a leader? For sure. As soon as you said, I took a test and it said leadership, I was like, well, that's a no-brainer. You're a coach. Ah, see? No, I didn't think so. I didn't. I went. Yeah, it's only because I know how humble you are but also I know that because you're a coach and you take initiatives like um working on your house working on the projects working on you know investments you know having the authority to excel somebody's career in in the Paralympics it's almost like that takes leadership qualities you you Leadership qualities are almost necessary in coaching. And some people are successful at it. Some people aren't. I'm not saying all coaches that are good leaders. But what I am saying is you need to have this power of persuasion and the relationship building, you know, the having the trust, the honesty, the good relationship, the knowledge, the experience, all of these things collaborate and include a good leader, in my opinion, because... Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's not about you at the end of the day, is it? A, lead, a good leadership is about your client or your or the the team or somebody else. Yeah, oh, it's lovely to hear you say that, Toss, because I find uh, your attributes combine, mesh together to make a beautiful leader as well. Oh. Leader, yeah. Anyway, so what were the attributes that this test said about you again? So this is where I'm just a bit like teetering on the, oh, I'm unsure because it's got honesty. Yes, I agree with um, humor, kind of. I think I'm, I'm a little bit funny. Um, <laughs> love. Of I mostly laugh at myself, if I'm honest. Um, <laughs> love of learning, which is so true. But underlying that, it says wisdom, um, gratitude, and then spirituality. So I feel like I've, I've definitely honed in my honesty, my gratitude and spirituality this year in particular. And I've also said to my friend, I said, I want to be more playful. Like, I don't want to take life too seriously because I've been in that stress, anxiety, burnout stage, right? And I've cultivated the overthinking part of me. Yeah. I want to let that all go now. And I feel like this year has definitely been a transitional year for like me letting go of the old me and moving into the new me. And I Yeah, feel well... There's wisdom right there. So, right? Yeah. So wisdom isn't one thing. Wisdom is a combination of things, and it can be a constantly different combination. As long as you're doing good and feeling good about doing good, you know, I think too so. good. Too yeah. good. Yeah, for sure. I feel like as long as you're doing what you love and you are able to, you know, pursue what you love and do what you love in your job, that that's amazing. That's almost like the cherry on top. But also, you're not hurting anyone, right? You're you're still trying to be a good version of the best version of yourself. Like I try and strive <laughs> to do that each day. But okay, so I want to ask how 
Yeah. Describe an experience when you were working at your best and actually excelled at some of your strengths. How how do you feel when using your strengths? So I'm going to try and hopefully conjure up a story where you told me what some of your strengths are. But when did you feel good? When did you feel good? Describe a story. And I, and I bet your strengths is in, in that story. I met some people on the weekend who were older than me and had built a million-dollar business and then sold this million-dollar business and enjoyed life for uh, quite a few years. And then uh, in their 60s, they said, over a pot of tea, they said, do you want to build that again but better? And so over the first pot of tea, they talked about the pros and cons and they went, this is going to be a two pot of tea decision. So they ordered the second pot of tea. This is how they were talking. It was so amazing to listen to. I, I just, I'm just like sitting there, like listening, listening. And um, and so they got their second pot of tea. And by the end of the second pot, they went, "Well, we have to make a decision." And the answer is, and he said yes, and she said yes. So they've done it again. They've built another multi, multi million dollar business. Like he was showing me his car, and I'm like. Oh my god, I do you want one? You would have loved it. It's a Mercedes AMG something, something, something. I'll find out exactly what it was. Um and they were so wise and so interesting to listen to. Um and yet me building a relationship with them, some of the things they said. Um, they went, like, this is a problem that we have to work out. And I would just be my logical self and go, well, just reframe that word and don't call it a problem, call it a project, call it a, I think I did say project. And they went, that's brilliant because now it's not a problem anymore. Now it's a project and projects have steps. You know, so problems don't have steps. Problems are just one big thing. But now it's a project. We know how to we know how to attack a project. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what did the, what's the other thing I said? Uh, um, oh, seeing things from another person's point of view. And um, there was another instance where they were talking about um, the headbutting a little bit. And I went, yeah, but from the other person's point of view, blah 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 blah. And they went. You're so wise. You're so clever. Do you like like we really do want to invest in these are the investors. Do you, we really do want to invest in your project. So I think those three things that I spoke about, being logical, seeing something from another person's point of view, and um, relationship building, that's my win this week. That's using those three things has moved me into a realm where investors want to invest money into yeah. my ideas why wouldn't they because that's the thing well, it, sometimes yeah it is about being logical but it's also about that relationship people always buy for sure right for sure you can be logical but a rubbish person and they go wow she was like she had some good ideas but she's crap <laughs> <laughs> you know she's a horrid person that's you know true. and you don't want to work with someone like that yeah so yeah, yeah. i agree agree and i love that story and um okay so you've already used those signature strengths my ne- my next question was going to be what two strengths can you use this week and in what way so i'm guessing you're going to continue to use those strengths that you know that are your keys to this new project and this investment yeah well not deliberately i don't think if i if you if i tried to do it deliberately would i do it as well would i I think no. I think if you go in there going, I, I I, have to be logical, I have to see something from another person's point of view and I have to really, really make sure I build a relationship with these people, I think you just sort of, it, it would break down. It would be too obvious that you're trying too hard or yeah, just I get think- it I think you're being authentically you without being yeah, that's the word. manipulative or contrived. Yes. In the situation, yes. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the, again, coming back to your humbleness. So, yeah. <laughs> Are you going to tell me a story about you using your strengths? Oh my goodness. Um, I think, and so based on the, um, 
test that I took yesterday. Uh-huh. I feel like the spirituality and gratitude is definitely something that I am using daily. So in terms of I'm, I've still got my gratitude journal, but I'm making it a daily habit. To, even before I journal, because I love journaling my thoughts and, and feelings and things like that. So what I end up doing is just writing gratitude before I start journaling or right at the end because I feel like that kind of takes me out of my head sometimes and because I've I've got this soul thing of right what do I need to do with my life you know instead of like jumping on different projects or leaping towards different things I'm like let me just sit and kind of contemplate what's going to happen but not think too much and that's like you know like I said it's a bit of a tendency of mine so I feel like going into gratitude eases me it it enables me to feel joyful and happy and just grateful for everything I have and it just reminds me how abundant and rich I actually am like having my family around me and and then it's almost like somebody's called it like I think they Abraham Hicks calls it a rampage so when you talk about one thing you're grateful for, then all of a sudden more and more and more and more and more and more things come through. And it's not as difficult. I remember years and years ago, my friend, oh, it was a bad time, but my friend used to say, oh, you know, what do you like about yourself? And I was like, I don't know. I'm like, I don't <laughs> feel anything. But now it's more of a, it's so easy to feel gratitude. And even if you're naming the same things or you're naming things that's happening in your life, it's, uh, it's just, it gives you that sense of like inner peace and appreciation and joy. And it's like, you have that, you know, like we were talking earlier about um, why high performers have a greater risk of burnout. It's because sometimes, yeah, they're pursuing their passion or yeah, they're, they're becoming obsessive, but it's almost like we're not really appreciating where we are because we're so busy looking for the goal and reaching that goal and achieving it. And again, it's tied into that hustle culture of you need to earn this. You need to, you know, you work hard and put the hours in and and have the right to have this because society has taught, this, taught us that. And I feel like you don't have to earn to be happy. You don't have to earn to be joyful. And I feel like people have mistaken the fact that oh, I can't be happy until when? No, no, no. Happy, that's just outside things. Like, yeah, okay, a car will make you happy for how long? A house will oh, make you happy for how long? got a scratch. Right? Till it's got a oh, yeah. And that's where I think that some of my strengths are now being cultivated in terms of, if I'm being happy just being grateful, well, then I'm being a better version of myself when I communicate with somebody else. You know, how can I be the best version of myself where I'm, acting and not reacting like I used to and I feel like that's some of the the strengths that I'm going to be continuing to pursue for the next like few weeks brilliant yeah that makes me happy to hear all of that this leads me I think this is a good roundup because next part that we are introducing in our new podcast phase series um health motivational tip of the day so I'm going to stick to the hot topic of the day and talk about training and why it can be mistaken as an obsession. So earlier, obviously, I talked about um, being the being aware of, you know, having the passion, having the obsession, being aware of where it can like kind of blur lines. And um, on my recent Instagram page, I talk about... Um, what do I talk about? I talk about, um, <laughs> right? Let me see if I can get this up. Share your screen, yeah. I don't know if it's about talk. working out and. Uh, let me just see if I can open this hyperlink because I don't know it off by heart. So I'm just trying to bring it up on my screen. So, yeah, so my health tip of the day is that motivational post that I posted recently on my Instagram page. And it says what training isn't about punishing your body for the food you ate, working out till you're exhausted, pushing past the pain and gaining the extra reps. Training is about appreciating your body. It's celebrating what it can do and finding the joy in what you are doing. And I feel like for me, that is definitely my 
health motivational tip in line with hot topic and mistaking obsession for training so what is yours what is your health tip of the day i knew this question was coming it's the one question that tulsi did tell me to um have an answer for i did have an answer had a top answer i can't remember it oh no no i didn't write it down um health motivational tip Draw something from your own day or like from the podcast. My own day? Yeah. Um, I am doing so much better with sleeping well. I told you this, didn't I? I have been in bed by 10 o'clock with no screen time before that. Just conversation, yeah. Um, and we love it. We absolutely love it. It's and that has made so many transferable differences to my following day, and even the day leading up to it, because I, I'm a bit more organised. Knowing I just there's a definite definitive time yeah. to put things down, definitive time to lay down. I'm not asleep by ten o'clock. Not always. It's winding down, um, isn't it? It's like wind down, and we go to bed. And we having the sunset, but in your hat. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah. So I'm going to say, really think about your sleep. I've had um, it been called sleep hygiene lately. So if that's, I don't know, it's a bit of a weird way of putting it. Sleep hygiene. But anyway, it's called sleep hygiene in 2022. So <laughs> get your good sleep. Um, in and when I wake up in the morning, I do the um, most mornings, not when I have to get out of bed at 4 a.m., but um, other mornings when I don't have to, I'll do the meditation or the self-guided meditation. And another one that I'll do, Tulse, um, have you ever done this? You get into like a theta sleep and then you think, not a sleep, but a med um, meditative state, and then you think about where you are now with a project or a problem or whatever you want to call it, yeah. call it whatever, think about the past. So you know when they say in body language when people talk about the past or something that's already happened, their eyes will go to the right. And when they think about the future or set, or talking about a lie, they'll think they'll go to the left. And when they're talking about the present or um, something they've done now or thinking about now, they'll look at you or they'll look ahead, meet your eyes. Um, and so you can do this in a meditative state and you think about where you are right now, your present. You think about the past. So your eyes don't necessarily look completely to the left. They might just divert a little bit to the left and a little bit up. And then when you think about the present, your eyes will go 20 degrees up and that's pretty normal. Yeah. So before someone will talk to you, if you've asked them a question, and I know I do it now that I know it, it's a thing, I know I, you sort of look up a little bit and then you'll make eye contact with someone. So you go, right? So then you think about the present and then you think about what you want this problem or project to be in the future. Yeah. And and um, for the future you also look about 20 degrees up and a little bit to the left but not fully like you're not trying to strain your eyes. Mm. Just do that a little bit. And subtle. is that what you're saying? It's just super subtle. You need to be quite aware of it. Different for everyone. <laughs> Different for everyone. So I don't want you to even think about it. You just you just um not deliberately do it. Yeah. So it might be just flicker. And this is what they say about body language being not as it's way more subtle than people make out. So you know I've read things where they go, people look to the left when they're telling a lie. Oh, yes. But it's very yeah, subtle. But, but, it, but it's not as obvious as you think. It's like no. a little flicker or a flutter. Yeah. Um, yeah, or a blink to the left, you know. Um, so that's a, a little technique. That's the one I'm learning at the moment. Oh. And so when you think about the past, the present, but the future is the one you really focus on. So spend a minute or three minutes focusing, visualising the future because you've seen the past, you've seen the present mm. and and now you know. And you can also see how far you've come by doing that, so it's actually a really good feeling as well. So I'm finding that very healthy but also super useful. Like, 
Thank yeah, and I love that. The fact that you're visualizing and that's basically your manifestation, right? Your manifestation right. Right? visualizing your yeah. Thing. But yeah, say actually, when you meditate, meditate what you want to happen in the day. Like, and that's why sometimes I set intention. Exactly. I'm like, okay, so this is my intention. Sometimes it ends up as a to-do list, but I'm very careful to narrow it down. You know, my intention is to show up for the podcast, or my intention is to do the prep work here. And if I don't do all of my to-do list or intentions, well, then it's turned into a to-do list basically. But it should be very small, and it should be very. Mm-hmm. I love the fact that one of them definitely is cast on what you want your day to look like. And I feel like people a lot of times let life happen to them, but they forget that they are creating their own reality. And I feel like you're on that whole journey now of just going, right, no, 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 wait a second. I'm in charge of my life. I'm in charge of my thoughts. I'm in charge of my emotions. How do I control it in this controlled environment? And then whatever happens well, then you're open to receiving more, right? You're Oh, this or more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have parameters. I won't accept anything less. Yes, agree, <laughs> agree. Well, I love that. That's a perfect way to end the health tip of the day and this whole podcast. Guys, I hope that you really enjoyed this format. If you did, please comment below. Kelly, you've been awesome, as always. I loved our conversation and, and listening. I love our conversations. Um, yeah just listening to how your whole well-being is kind of like evolving and um yeah guys if you found this podcast useful comment below share it with your family and friends and remember we would love to have you as part of our community on patreon the link can be just um found in the description box below hit the subscribe button if you're watching us on youtube click the notification bell so you don't miss the alerts on the brand new podcasts that we release And I hope you enjoyed this new podcast, um, this new season and this new format. So we'll see you on the next one. See you on the next one. Thanks, Tolls. Bye, girls. Bye.